Hey everyone, it's good to be back. Holy crap, what is it? June 28th, it feels like I haven't been back in my normal mood, my normal vibes, my normal everyday goodness in since really E3, really. Uh, E3 was pretty draining. I've, had, I've done a lot of things since then. Me and the kiddos and my fiance went on a mini vacation, which gave me a major eye infection. So that's lovely. So now you'll see glasses here for this week. It is what it is. I know the glasses, you know, I look much better without them on. But uh, yeah, I got, got to take care of my, my health and all that. So we got a couple big stories for here for you today. We got Mario plus Rabbids news, uh, which is really, really exciting. And then some potentially troubling or bad news for the Switch Pro. However, it's interesting because I'm not really sure that it's even new news, but Player Essence picked up on it, and this is coming from a major YouTuber, at least for uh, Nintendo UK fans. So we're gonna get into it because I'm, I'm very curious on your guys' thoughts on this, and I wanna, I, I wanna give my thoughts as well. Uh, but before we get into that, I gotta remind you, we are giving away two copies of Skyward Sword HD right now at least uh that's the plan um so head on down to the description uh, to enter i wish you guys luck and let's get into this so let's start with mario plus rabbit's kingdom metal because there was a new interview recently done um and this interview was done uh on the italian website multiplayer uh, they chatted with David Cellini, the creative direct director of Ubisoft Milan, and the associate producer at Ubisoft, Christina uh, Nava, about Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. And there's basically five major takeaways from this interview to go over. Uh, the first one is the team composition doesn't have any limits this time around, which is interesting they had limits in the first place. But, of course, the first Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle was kind of an experimental game. Um, so you can go with all Rabbids or all uh, Mushroom Kingdom. So this is in terms of your character selection, who you can put in your party, right? You used to have to have Mario, have to have this, have to have that. Now you don't have to have anything anymore. You can really make any composition you want. Um, they said this is one of multiple fan demands slash suggestions that the team took extremely seriously. So yeah, no limits on who can be in your party. Uh, the player seemingly has no limit of movement within the movement range. So you see that giant circle in the gameplay? Yeah, you can move anywhere you want in there. You don't like move one spot and be like, oh no, now I can't move anymore, like you'd run out of movement uh, in the prior games. You can move anywhere in that circle uh, before the end of your turn. Um, the development team and general scope of the project, as stated previously, has grown considerably. The previous game was handled by Ubisoft Milan and Paris, with a team of just over 100 developers. This time around, other Ubisoft subsidiaries are involved, and the team is three times as large as the original. Guys, that's over 300 people working on this game. If you thought that this was not considered a major AAA game by Ubisoft, you're mistaken. The first game had over 100, and that was an experimental version of the game. Now we have the sequel, which is getting the full AAA Ubisoft treatment at 300 plus developers. That is insane. Guys, that is the kind of size of team that was used to create Breath of the Wild. Think about that. Breath of the Wild, one of the greatest games of this generation, right? Amazing. 2017 game of the year. Uh, yeah, the size team used on that is the kind of size team being used on Mario and Rabbids. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Like, it's insane to me, but yeah, clearly we should have very, very high expectations for Sparks of Hope. Remember, it comes out next year. No, te no like exact release month yet. There will be a free camera, uh, and the exploration element is less linear. Uh, but the game is an open world. So I, there were some thoughts process when the first footage came out that the game might be open world. It's not, uh, but it's also not as linear as the original. So the original, you kind of like set paths you had to go on. Seems like this one's going to be a bit more open, but it's still kind of, you know, it, there's like a linearity to the progression of the story and all that jazz. It kind of leads to the game not being open, but uh, it's definitely more free. Uh, more freedom of choice, I guess, is probably the best way to put it. Uh, you, not everything needs to be open world, by the way, and I'm not even disappointed this game is an open world. I love the original so much. Why the hell would I care if this game was open world? I don't play this game for open worldness, so I'm, I'm okay with it. Not everything fits the open world thing. Now, I think Pokemon Legends Arceus being open world is great. Zelda being open world is great, but not everything needs to be open world. I feel like there's this stigma in video games. If it's not open world, it's not quality. Come on. Get out of here. This game ugh, sparks a hope. Mm. You're carrying my hopes for 2022, which is insane because they're Breath of the Wild 2's Pokemon Legends Arceus. Yeah, it just, yeah. There, there's a lot happening in 2022, but Sparks of Hope is trying to like 
be up there with the big boys. I mean, 300 plus developers. I don't know. I'm, I'm really excited. I've massively enjoyed the first game. This, this game looks like it's taking it to that next level. And that to me has me extremely excited. Obviously, it's trying to release in the same year with other big, big guns from Nintendo. Uh, and if it's going to do that, it needs to bring the goods. First game around, I thought brought the first time around, it brought the goods. Second time around, I'm expecting that next level. So we'll see what happens. So thank you so much uh, to those people for the interview. Obviously, uh, to the Italian website multiplayer as well for getting that interview for us. Now, this next bit of news is weird. So there's this YouTube channel called uh, Switch Up. I'm, maybe you've heard of them. I'm not sure. I haven't watched a lot of their content, but I have heard of them. Uh, they have 186,000 plus subscribers. Uh, they are based in the UK. Obviously, as the name implies, Switch Up. They, they cover Nintendo Switch stuff. Um, and they put out some tweets that are a little concerning if you're looking forward to Switch Pro in particular in 2021. Now, remember... Switch Pro itself, I get it. Some people are sick of even hearing the name Switch Pro. Fine, call it new Nintendo Switch. I don't care what you call it. Uh, whatever that next supposed mid-gen upgrade platform uh, is that, you know, we still don't have confirmation even exists. So I get it. it's weird that we're even talking about it. But, um, yeah, they're, they're, they put out some tweets that I think are um, maybe they're not even understanding all the reports out there. Or maybe they haven't followed it closely enough. So here's the tweets. Let's just... Just say what it says. It says, no Switch Pro in 2021. Okay. Reliable peripheral manufacturing source from China. Working on products to be adapted for it. Says they've been told 2022 global market release. And then, and then they say, let's hope it's wrong. And then they reply, I just hope they're wrong, honestly. But let's think about what it's being said here. And then actually compare this to prior reports on Switch Pro. So no Switch Pro in 2021. Okay, I mean, that that's just pretty plain. But why is Switch it, Switch it Up or Switch Up here saying no Switch Pro? Because they have a contact at a manufacturing source in, si in, China, China, in China that's making peripherals. Uh, and they said, you know, the products, uh, you know, are, they've been told 2022 for a global market release. Think about this for a second. Their, ba their, their entire basis of saying no Switch Pro in 2021 is built on the idea that a Chinese uh, peripheral manufacturer uh, is saying that they were told 2022 for a global release. Global release. That Those two words matter. They matter greatly here. You want to know why they matter greatly? Because prior reports on Switch Pro stated that they will be first releasing in Japan and the United States in 2021 before releasing the Switch Pro to the rest of the world globally in 2022. That's right. Some of the OG reports on Switch Pro already told us that it would not be available globally until 2022, that there would be a focus on North America and Japan at launch. This actually falls in line with other mid-gen refreshes Nintendo has done as well, where they did not globally release them at the same time. And in the midst of a pandemic, which I know is you know, coming to an end for a lot of us, in the midst of you know manufacturing issues and chip shortages, bare minimum, it was pretty unrealistic to expect Nintendo to globally launch you know, a, a, a mid-gen refresh in the middle of having chip shortages. Clearly, the best way to launch a mid-gen refresh, if one even exists, we have to, be, you know, keep that caveat there, is to do a slow release, right? To stagger the release, to not do a global launch. Now, the Switch is region-free, and if you can get your hands on it anywhere in the world from other regions, you will be able to enjoy the full capabilities and all that. I don't think there's going to be anything held back, but it's still one of those, hey, look, they're trying to control it to a point where they're not worried about shortages when they do actually release it in given territories. Now, will there still be shortages? Probably right away at launch, but will the shortages continue, you know, a month out? I have no idea, and I think Nintendo's trying to mitigate that before they bring it to other parts of the world they don't want to have what happened with you know the playstation 5 or the xbox series x or what happened with say you know all the new gpus and, and latest cpus that come out that keep being sold out that have global launches because that ends up being something these companies aren't capable of keeping up with and then nobody ends up happy nobody in any of the regions these parts are available are happy so when i read switch up that says no switch pro in 2021 that's not actually what they were told the peripheral manufacturer from China source that they have uh, is, said that they've been told 2022 global market release. That's that's not the same as it not coming out in 2021. That just means it won't be available all over the globe until 2022. 
that falls in line again with prior switch reporting. So again, this is my interpretation, obviously, their interpretation, the information as it stands, it says no switch pro in 2021, reliable peripheral manufacturer source from China, working on products to be adapted for it. So they've been told 2022 global market release, let's hope it's wrong. I get it, but it, again, my interpretation, my opinion on this is that this doesn't actually mean no switch pro in 2021. Now, if you're asking my opinion, will we get a Switch Pro in 2021? I don't know, right? The, the the major person pointing towards 2021 is Takahashi Machizuki from Bloomberg, who said September slash October, previously said it will come this year. So even if it doesn't hit that date, he did say it will, it will come this year for sure before. I haven't heard much from him since. Probably won't hear much from him since until Nintendo actually unveils it. If they unveil it, if it hasn't been scrapped, if this thing is even real, if they're not just going to skip it and go straight to Switch 2 in a few years, I have no idea what Nintendo's plans are. To be clear here, every time I talk about this information, we have other people and other sources saying things, and I convey that information for you, and then everything else I say around it is just my personal opinion. I don't have any of my own sources. I don't have any insider information that you guys don't have access to. Whenever I hear stuff, I bring it to you. If you don't want to hear about it, it's cool. Just don't watch the videos. You know, I know some people complain about it. Switch Pro is not real. Switch Pro, it's fine. Believe what you want. I'm not here to poo poo on your beliefs. Uh, personally, I do think a mid gen switch is coming. I don't think I need rumors to confirm that for me. I think the existence of the DSi, the new 3DS, the Game Boy Color, uh, the Game Boy Advance SP and others proved to me that slightly upgraded versions of systems happen all the time and the light wasn't really an upgrade. Uh, so yeah, I, I think we're going to get an upgraded switch. What that upgrade is going to be, how big it's going to be. Is it going to be that new, that new, uh, Orin Black Knight? Now it seems like there's actually, um, a, 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 I can't remember. There, there's some sort of other naming convention uh, out there for Black Knight as well. Cause basically there's two SOCs for it. One of them is the Switch version of it. One of them is the OG version of it, and they have different naming conventions. It doesn't really matter. The point is that uh, it could be that, or that could be for next gen. It could obviously be the Mariko chipset that we've seen mentioned in the Alula version of in the OS. There's a lot of crap out there, and I don't know what to make of any of it other than me saying I think it's going to happen just based on the history of Nintendo. But what it's going to be, is it really going to have that 7-inch OLED screen? I have no idea. I don't know what Nintendo's cooking. They're so hard to predict uh, that we're just going to have to wait and see. But as information comes out like this, I'm going to continue to share it because I am highly interested in this topic and highly interested in this story. Uh, just like I was highly interested in Sparks of Hope. So we talked about it. Uh, now, some of you might be wondering why we're not talking about the Smash Bros. presentation today. Um, I'll just briefly mention that, yeah, the new character supposedly comes out in two days. Um, and they added some, some Mii Fighters. Uh, the Mii Fighters look really cool. Shantae finally getting some love. I'm really excited about Shantae being added in, even just as a Mii Fighter. Almost looks like a, a character with how good they did that, that costume. So um, I'm glad to see some of those. There's Dante in from, from you know, that, the, his series. So there's all of that. And obviously the new stage, I think, looks really cool with the breakable aspects of it and all that. Again, I think it all looks really cool. I'm just not that interested in the new Smash character in general. Uh, so that's why I didn't like live stream it or, or do what people may have expected me to do based on my E3 coverage. Just wasn't something of interest to me. But there you go. I mentioned some of the major news, I think, from it. Uh, and you know what? I'll link down to the, uh, the the Sakurai Presents video if you want to go watch that for yourselves uh, and get all the additional info that maybe you, you want to know about the music or, 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 or what the Battlefield version of the stage looks like or all this jazz. Again, head down to the description. I'll link it to you guys because I know a lot of people are interested in that. It just happens to not be me. Hence kind of the toss away mention at the end. All right, folks, I am Nintendo RoboJets from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch each and every one of you in the next video. Go Bucks, baby. Yeah, if you stuck around for the extra few seconds, go Bucks. They're up 2-1. Christian Middleton. Oh, baby. Oh, baby.